Hey everybody, welcome to another spooky episode of The Spookening! Today we're talking about a story called... Oh, yeah, I'm Nathan, your humble WD ghost. That's Brandon, a scholar who's a ghouler of breeding. And Jake... Breeding? Breeding monsters <laughs> I'm a in breeder. his basement. Yeah. It's the scariest thing you can be nowadays is a breeder. Mm-hmm. There you go. A little sly political commentary from the bookening. There's Jake, he's the pastor, who's a disaster of blood curdling horror. Yay. And today we are talking about a very weird story called that will seriously pick up on the microphone I know. and I'll have to edit but I really it out. Wanna, I really want to take it off. Just it's take it off. Get it off. You know what? I'm just going to leave this in. <laughs> <laughs> Jake took the piece of plastic off of his what is that Gatorade bottle I had some sports drink I picked up at a gas station on the way up some sports is Jake's know. a sporto is Jake a sporto I don't know what a sporto is I don't, I don't know, know what a speedo either. is <laughs> <laughs> he sports a speedo <laughs> that's what it means Jake sports a speedo yeah it's a sporto Jake sports a speedo and it's like a tongue twister Jake sports a speedo and he thinks it's really neato Jake sports a speedo anything. Hey, speaking of horrifying things, yeah. uh, let's talk about... Short... More of Nathan and Brandon's poetry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is a wonderful... <laughs> Nicely done. Singing My Sister Down, a much beloved and anthologized classic horror, weird... I don't know if it's, a, no, it's horror. It's just kind of weird fiction story from the last 20 years by Margot Lanigan who you've definitely not heard of, and neither have I. She's some Australian writer of short stories and young adult fiction. And the thing that she's most known for is this. The story gets reprinted all the time because, I don't know, people like it or something. Jake, describe for us what happens. Margot Lanigan's <laughs> immortal classic. <laughs> Singing My Sister Down. A young woman is being publicly executed for axing her husband to death. As one does. He was axing for it. <laughs> <laughs> she has to walk out onto the hot tar pit and stand there and slowly be devoured by it. Her family has to go and attend to her while the whole community watches and observes. Do you think when celebrities have to have this happen in their community, they dye the tar pit red so they can say you're going out onto the red tar pit? <laughs> Brandon was really proud Please of that Please go one. home. <laughs> I'm leaving, guys. We'll see you later. Uh, we need a grim shot. Okay, well, you just described the story. That's that really is, is that what story. you asked me to do? That's that the really story. is the story. Yeah, no. yeah, the whole point is just living with the, you know, everybody trying to deal with, in you as the reader, dealing with this horrific... Slow moving death. Cruel and unusual punishment. It's got yeah. that Poe aspect to it. That's the affect that kind of drives it. But then it also has a little bit of the, the uh, maybe not dystopian flavor, but the you're living in a culture that you can't escape from these consequences. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure so. it's inspired by and it very is reminiscent of the classic, much anthologized story that we all had to read in high school. Uh, what's it called? That Shirley Jackson story. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the lottery. The lottery. Yeah. Yes, you, you are trapped in this society where people kind of can see what's wrong with it, but you really can't do anything about it. And in the end, you go along with it. Mm -hmm. But even like the lesson that the mom gives everybody else in the family is be careful who you marry because you never know who's going to make you, you know, go crazy. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to provoke you to kill them. Right. <laughs> yeah. There's not much. In... Be careful who you love. It's yeah. like, because they, you know, they they might make you go into rage kill mode and mm -hmm. then you'll have to stand on the tar pit. Well, I guess the lesson also is more, it's like a barn burning by Faulkner mm -hmm. where the real thing is you're supposed to sympathize with the young kid at the end running to the arms of the mom. Mm -hmm. And in Faulkner's story, it's a little boy running away. It's yeah. just that moment where this child, I think, is sees the horrors of what's around him. Yeah. And is trying to find a way to escape. And that's that's where the sympathy comes from. What is the literary term for making the normal seem uncanny? Uh, there's, a, there's a word for that. Oh, defamiliarization. Defamiliarization, yeah. yeah. I think there's a little bit. I mean, it's, a, it's in a weird fiction setting, so it's not 
straight defamiliarization, <laughs> but it is contextualizing yeah. normal kind of emotions and feelings against this really weird, barbaric, old school. An idea of the Russian formalists in that episode that we may never get back to. <laughs> <laughs> we will. <laughs> I think we have to. Yeah. Um, we probably already, maybe we've already done it by then, by now. But it's like, gosh, if I was part of some barbaric, prehistoric, aboriginal tribe and they were doing some kind of awful thing like we read about them doing, what are the completely normal human emotions that me and my family would feel as that happened? And that's kind of a creepy question to have to deal with for the space of six pages or whatever. How many decapitated heads... (laughs) <laughs> to give to this story out and, of how many and why out of seven out of seven mm-hmm. uh five or six i was gonna say six yeah it's not right up there like at a seven i think that telltale heart still is stealing the like the pinnacle of this batch mm-hmm. it's the willows of this year even though i still think the willows is better the yeah the willows can we all agree that the willows is the best supernatural thing, thing we've that we've read, read yeah. that yeah. includes dracula frankenstein yes. yeah all of it definitely but for what it Unless does you count uh something wicked oh that, well, that would, yeah that might be the other that one. actually is the best but. but that's more of like brandon says he likes <laughs> characters and stuff like that something wicked is like a novel with it's actually good stuff <laughs> and stuff for this year i'm going to give it to telltale heart so far because it lets you at least see why poe was going it was inevitable that poe would be remembered mm-hmm. so yeah or whatever that is good or whatever is bad about that well i just choose chose this one because it uh, pops up in anthologies all the time and people tend to like it i think it swept it, it won the shirley jackson <laughs> award i think as well as a bunch of fugo and nebulas and it was like every couple of years there's something that hits the scene that people really like and this was one of them this was one of them this was one of the big ones of the last 20 years or so yeah if you kind of want to see uh, not particularly grisly but still unsettling version of what's being done in the field today you could do worse you could do worse um you could i I can tell you you could do a lot worse worse. because this lady's not like a spooky lady she's just an australian children's author really so okay well we'll be back tomorrow that's why it read so much like a children's book to me yeah (laughs) exactly. i just had to get my kids around and read it to them yeah a little i neglected to include the illustrations and the version (laughs) i sent you guys (laughs) it's wonderful (laughs) yeah it's good stuff good stuff Tomorrow, we'll finally be getting to something I've been looking forward to, which is Patricia Dye Smith. Ooh. All right. We'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>